Greetings and welcome to Pinball Help. Mike here. So today I am working on um, a game that I thought I wouldn't have to work on. Um, one of the problems is with these games, it's like playing whack-a-mole. You know, you get one thing working and then something else goes wrong. Oftentimes it happens so quickly that you think everything is interrelated and oftentimes it's not. And so I'm going to go over an interesting problem that I've encountered. I'm still not sure what the solution is, but I'm going to give you my thought processes of how I'm dealing with it. Because I think that's one of the really important parts, is when there's something wrong with the machine, how do you get from A to B? How do you solve the problem? But more importantly, how do you isolate where the problem is? In this case, what we're, gonna, what we're talking about is a problem with the light matrix, the lights, the computer CPU controlled lights on the pinball machine. I'm going to show you what, I've, what, what I noticed. So I've got this Gottlieb Brave and working. I disabled the light in the back box so we could see everything. Um, it's basically all original except I did change the small 5-volt um, power supply up there. Other than that, it's basically the, the main game. Um, I've got everything restored, the game's been playing perfectly, and then all of a sudden this happens. And I want you to pay attention to up here, up top. So this is the top half of the play field. You'll see in the track mode, um, all the lights are blinking and animated except for those three at the rollover ones. Check it out. They stay on while everything else doesn't. So, and you see at the top, there's, those lights are supposed to go out when you roll over them. It's a very important play field feature because that is, um, that's how you tell, you know, how far along you are in the bonus multiplier. But they're, they're all on, so I can't tell. So something is definitely screwed up. Now, what confuses me is uh, all the other lights are working. They're, they're reacting to what's going on in the playfield, except for those ones up top. See? The ball goes through, and the lights stay lit. You know? I can turn the game on and off, and it still stays that way. As long as the game is on, those lights at the top stay lit. Now, if they would... If, if they had just gone out all the time... Um, then I might think, okay, it's a connector problem or something like that. But the fact that the lights are on all the time leads me to believe that there's something else going on here. It's not simply a uh, missing wire. So as you can see, all the other lights are working. There's one pop-up or light that's out that I think is just a loose bulb. But everything else is blinking and animating, you see, except for these three lights up top. So, let's see if we can figure out if there's something specific and common to those lights. So the first thing I want to do, now, when you encounter a problem on a Gottlieb system, anything, the number one thing you do is you check all the connections. You pull the connectors off, you make sure they're all looking good, you, know, you make sure all the IDC things are fine, you know, So because all these, these connectors up in here can be a problem. And you can look in the manual and you can see, you know, which of these connectors control the connections to the lights, and you can reseed them and do all of that, which I did, and it didn't make any difference. So what's up with those rollovers? Okay, here's, how, here's the process. So first thing we need to do is find out what, where those lights are in the schematics. Okay, so here are, here's the schematics right here. This is the wiring diagram for the light matrix. Okay, so everything right here, these are all the individual lights. Um, so I can look and I can see the top rollovers are right here. So let's zoom in, take a look at that. So this, come on, there we go. So this shows light 9, 10, and 11. Number one top rollover, number two top rollover, number three. So that's L9, 10, 11. And um, we know that it's, this tells us um, what uh, pins they are. And this just gives us our generally... So we know those. these are lights 9, 10, 11. So now let's go into the schematics of the light driver board. And... Uh, Let's find specifically 
where the control sequences are for these lights. So we are looking at this right here. Okay, so there's a light 9, light 10, light 11 right there. I don't know why light 9 is not labeled as odd, probably just a, a no mission. But see, 9, 10, and 11. And what, do we, what we notice is they're all coming from this one particular chip that's labeled Z3, a latch flip-flop, which is a two, an SN74175N chip. So this chip is controlling all three of these lights. So we see there's a common thing going on with all three of these lights. But there's a fourth light in there that's light 8. Now, I didn't notice any other light that was off. So that kind of, if this light is working, then this might, then that, there could be another cause. So let's look up light 8. Light 8 is... Number four spot target. So number four top spot target. So that's the stand-up target on the upper bank. All right. So let's go back over. Let's go back over to the um, to the game real quick. See and take a look. Take a closer look. And so. If you look, you can see there's four stand-up targets there. And the one on the right is lit all the time. See, the, the three next to it are animating, but that one... So that same CPU-controlled light is malfunctioning in the same way that the rollovers are. So there was a fourth light that I didn't see. And they all correspond to the um, that one chip output. So this leads me to believe possibly there's something going on wrong in this in this in this train. So going back to the going back to the uh, schematics this looks like an issue, this Z3. Now I just waiting for the ambulance to go by. Um, I am waiting. I, I, I went online and looked up the part numbers for these things, and they're pretty cheap. So I went ahead and ordered a couple of these ICs. I don't know for sure if, this is the, if, if the IC is the problem. But I've got my suspicions because all, three, all four of these lights are the ones that are stuck on. Um, always a good idea, you know, to go online into some of the forums and ask people, hey, is it common for these chips to go out? Is there something that I need to know? Um, because other people may have gone through this before. And whatever I find out, I'm going to share with you guys on the video so that if somebody else encounters it, they don't necessarily have to go through the same wild goose chase. Um, so I don't know what the problem is. I'm going to, but I have an area to look. So I'm probably going to get out a logic probe, and I'm going to probe this chip. And we're going to test these input signals and the output signals and see what it looks like. So as I understand it, um, there's supposed to be a pulse on these input lines indicating a state change. And then these output lines go low or high depending upon whether the light's on or not. So I should be able to hook up a, a logic probe and check out these input and output lines and see if they are changing state the way I, we would expect. If the input states change and the output states don't, we know the chip is bad. But I'm also wondering if, see this chip is supplied voltage here, if possibly uh, there could be a problem in the powertrain supplying power to this, this chip or the, or the thing to ground. So these are two other things to check is pin 1 and 16 on this, which indicates that's where the 5 voltage is. And we see pin 8 is going to ground, and pin 9 is going to ground too after a capacitor. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to dig up 
my test equipment and we're going to dive a little bit deeper into this to see. Another, so that's probably the next step. Now there's also another step that I can do because I've got the, the tools here and that is to swap out the MPU board because I did get a second MPU board. And not everybody has this luxury, but this is one way where I can tell whether it's isolated to a um, connector or something going on on the MPU board. So this is a, a replacement uh, main board. And uh, although I guess the problem is not on the main board, is it? No, it's on the driver board. So I can't swap out a driver board. Test this. But... I can swap out the main CPU board to see if the problem is further up the line. We don't know if these signals are coming from another source and they're bad there. So that's one way I could isolate. Is it on the driver board or is it coming from before the driver board? I just don't know. This is another scenario where other owners that have encountered this problem before might have some insight into what is more likely the problem. I don't know and I won't know until I dive in a little bit further, but this is as far as I've got with this video and I just wanted to share with you my progress, so stay tuned and in, in the next installment we will be finding out more. So thanks for watching.